Thanks to Les Schwab tires, I'm a confident backseat driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Don't stress, just save up to $200 on select tires with financing at our Les Schwab Fall Tire Sale. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. You may have heard the phrase, the early bird gets the worm. Well, at Bickford Ford, the early bird gets first crack at the new 2023 Fords. Right now, order a new 2023 Ford F-150 and move to the front of the line for America's number one truck for the last 45 years. Or start your order on a 2023 Ranger, Edge, Bronco Sport, or Explorer. Washington's number one volume Ford dealership. Bickford Ford on Bickford Avenue in Snohomish or at Bickford.net. And here we go, game two of our doubleheader here tonight at Snohomish High School. Mark Ockett, Todd Elvig, Sarah Elvig bringing you the action. Same matchup of schools as the first game. It is the Glacier Peak Grizzlies against the Snohomish Panthers on STSPN.com. Our presenting sponsor tonight, the one, the only, Airfield Espresso. Heather, thank you for hooking us up with those delicious parachute punch punches two of them earlier in the game earlier tonight we appreciate that also adrenaline fundraising will have the player of the game les schwab a great sponsor so is american family insurance with sally petty gns heating cooling and air conditioning gene johnson plumbing mcdaniel's do it center monster beverage and the army and navy we got you fully covered here on stspn.com as in the first game tonight of our doubleheader the Glacier Peak Grizzlies defeated the Snohomish Panthers in girls basketball 49 to 35. Prior to that, it was a boys JV game with Glacier Peak winning 52 to 40. They're going through the starting lineups right now, so let's do that as well. First of all, for the visiting Glacier Peak Grizzlies, when I say visiting, not too far away, just across the valley there as these schools are both in the Snohomish School District. Head coach in his first year is Steve McCary. And first of all for Glacier Peak, at guard is a 6'1 junior, Joe Lee. Also starting at guard, a 6'1 senior, Nate Spang. Starting at junior, as a junior, as a guard, a 6'1 player, Sam Waldo. Also starting in the post, a 6'6 senior, Cooper Jensen. And starting as a guard to round up the lineup, a senior at 6'1, Paxton Bigby. So you got Lee, Nate Spang, Sam Waldo, Cooper Jensen and Paxton Bigby. There's 10 on the roster, so half of them in the starting lineup here tonight. And let's take a look at the assistants for Glacier Peak, Jeff Leary and Brandon Corsi, and let you know that uh, across the way, we've got the Snohomish Panthers coming out on the court as well. And let's take a look at their starting lineup. First of all, their head coach is Jeff Larson in his first season. And starting for the Panthers, a 6'2 senior forward, Amari Biggs. Also starting as a junior guard at 5'11", Drew Hansen. Starting as a junior guard, 6'3", Hudson Capelli. A junior guard starter at six feet is Jason Roth and rounding out their lineup, 6'4", junior forward, Drew Davis. It is Amari Biggs, Drew Hansen, Hudson Capelli, Jason Roth, and Drew Davis getting that lineup going for the Snohomish Panthers. They'll be in the white uniforms out there with the red and black and Glacier Peak going with the Dark, dark scheme right there 
the uh, announcer's nightmare of dark on dark with the numbers and letters on the uniform, but at least they got a little silhouetting around them there as they get set to go. And we're happy to be back at you doing this again. Thanks so much to everybody and our sponsors for being involved. And Todd, this is where you really just love every single second of what we're doing, especially look at the crowd now. I mean, it was a very good crowd for the girls game. And it looks like on the student side, each has doubled up over there. The Snohomish band is right in the middle and uh, they entertained us between games at halftime throughout. They are rock solid rock stars over there for the Panthers. Both these schools, a lot of these kids know each other extremely well. Let me tell you who the officials are. We got an all-star lineup tonight for referees. Steve Landro, Tom Friel, each of those has over 40 years experience up here officiating, and the great Michael McFadden. Tom Friel. So Friel. that's three really good ones right there. And Tom Friel, great to see him back out here on the hardwood officiating after taking a couple year break. And always fun to see the Snohomish native out there doing his job and doing a great job of it. Glacier Peak with the basketball as uh, we'll see how they go on their first offensive set here. First eight minutes as the quarter gets going. Driving through a dish off. Solid defense by Snohomish inside. A little elbowing there by Glacier Peak. And here we go. That's a long bomb out there way outside. Snohomish will secure the rebound and go the other direction. Here come the Panthers. I think that was Joe Lee. Now Lee had a solid game the other night with 16. I mean, last night. They just played last night. Rebounded out of there, and uh, it'll be Glacier Peak going the other direction. We'll watch and see how well they move the ball. We saw some good ball movement in that girls game earlier. With both coaches in their first season, Brian Hunter taking a year sabbatical, and he's been the only coach that Glacier Peak has known. There's an inside move. Paxton Big. Bigby getting it done. Bigby had 13 points last night. I think he's been in the weight room. Yeah, looks like he spent some time there. We were supposed to do the game on Tuesday, which was Glacier Peak and Bothell at Glacier Peak, but the snow that day forced us to not be able to do it. It'll be a blocking foul. We're going to count that basket. That basket is good by Drew Davis and one. Tom Friel indicating the foul is against Paxton Bigby. That'll be his first foul, first team foul. So at the line to try to complete the three point play is Drew Davis. Just underway, tied for the first time. That rims out of there. Strong rebound from Cooper Jensen, and here come the Grizzlies out of backcourt. Got a grab, yep, a little tight on the turn as he came over the arc that time. Foul against the Snohomish Panthers. That one is gonna go on Amari Biggs, his first. Did you see the rock star down there uh, to the left, uh, third row? It's, uh Tom Lafferty. You know, when you said rock star, I, I, I didn't even have to think who it was. I knew he might be coming tonight. So good. I got actually some info that he put together earlier this week and uh, sent out as he was uh, just having some fun thinking about the histories of the coaches here at Snohomish High School. And Tall Tom and I stay in touch quite a bit throughout the weeks. There's a nice drive on the right side, and the basket is good. That one by Nate Spang, his first two of the game. And back to a two-point lead for the Grizzlies. Yeah, what you don't know is he was fighting you for these games. Oh, was he? Yeah. Oh, I got that awkward. How did that, how'd that guy from SeaTac get that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I told him he could come up and be involved in this one. But he's got a good seat down there. He does. And he's sitting with Joel. Oh, he is. Okay, Joel Boyer's down there. Also does a good announcing with Tom on the KRKO in here. That is going to be a timeout called after the basket. Paxton Bigby coming through. He's got four points, and it's 6-2. to two. Glacier Peaks on top. We'll keep it here right now. Again, a very special thank you to Heather at Airfield Espresso. One of my favorite things, and I love coming to Snohomish. That's no secret. 
But coming up here is and coming across the valley off Seattle Hill Road up by uh, the Elvig Estate um, and getting clearance to go by it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Dropping down the hill and coming across the valley. I love that. And the uh, different places with the Christmas lights out there. And then coming on the uh, end of Harvey Airfield and working your way through by the big houses there. And then uh, coming by uh, a fine uh, steak joint, a nice place. And then uh, we've got Airfield Espresso right there and right up the hill and the historic homes. And suddenly you're transplanted to a different place in time and it feels great coming up here. Yeah, I'm not sure who's on the plus side of this deal because I stop there almost every day. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they appreciate that, and we appreciate their sponsorship. There's Absolutely. a move to the basket. Look at that. Amari Biggs getting it done. Biggs, a 6-2 senior forward. Like to see that inside action. Yeah, he's a player. Glacier Peak working it around. Snohomish getting rolling tonight. Able to start the season against their crossway rival. Oh, that had a beautiful touch off the left-handed shot from Joe Lee. It's up to a five-point lead at 9-4. to four. Lee was 16 points last night in the victory over Everett. They won 63-49. to 49. Up fake is good. Now you got a man open with them double teaming and sagging on him. Rebound. That one goes off the... Oh, that's a tough break. Biggs is fighting hard. Like that work down low by Amari Biggs. Four minutes to go halfway through the first quarter in the second game of our doubleheader at Snohomish High School. Yeah, there's a reach. That would be Drew Davis. Had the right idea, just a bit of too much physical contact. Foul goes against Davis, his first, second team foul. Yeah, I think oh. through the years, oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't Was know. that a bit of a flop out there by Glacier Peak? Okay, the Grizzlies working it in towards the basket. That's going to fall. And Paxton Bigby already has six points. He had 13 last night at Everett. Trying to get his man in the air right there. That was Jason Roth. Panthers working it around the horn. A seven point lead, not short. So that's the biggest lead of the game now for Glacier Peak. They've been rolling right from the start. Lead has not switched hands. Been tied once at 2-2. Wow, that was very athletic. That one had a lot of bounces. Biggs will pull the rebound down and now comes out of backcourt. Gives it to Hansen. Got a good shot out there, long distance. He was about, what, three and a half feet past the three-point line. And Biggs with the pick and two. You got to be careful with Amari Biggs out there on the floor. Looks like we have an official's timeout there as they got to discuss something. So yeah, the Bothell game canceled on Tuesday at Glacier Peak. Then that the game last night at Everett with oh, them winning by 14. What's he going got some on? Blood on him? Something. I think so. Yeah, that's what Tom was pointing to his chest, like yeah, and that would be an indication that there was blood on the player. They had to switch off. So coming in now is Nolan Soderstrom. You know, Joe Lee's just a just a sophomore. And they're putting that senior on him, and he's giving them the business out there. Oh, yeah. Well, that's some great talent for Glacier Peak. They have the basketball and a five-point lead. Two and a half to go in the first quarter on STSPN.com. Going worldwide, bringing you the high school action here on this Friday night, December 2nd. And quick hands coming through that time. Amari Big and gets it to his teammate. And the Panthers will come out of backcourt. A basket here would be big. Close that gap. They've trailed by as much as seven so far here in the first quarter. Panthers being patient. Now nine on the shot clock. Drive to the basket. Oh, yeah. Jason Roth muscles it in while in the air, nonetheless. 
And down to a three-point lead for Glacier Peak. Grizzlies in front court. And some good crossover switching around. Left-handed shot off the left side. And there's Biggs again. Biggs is off to a really good start, not just with the four points, but he's been in great position already here in the first quarter. That one goes off the top, and it's going to be out of bounds. So off the, minute the super 20, structure. Off the super structure with a minute 26 to go here in the first quarter. Snohomish gives it up. Glacier Peak will have the ball. Panthers with a couple of turnovers. Three for Glacier Peak. To recap, two team fouls for Snohomish, just one for Glacier Peak. A little fancy dribbling that time for Glacier Peak. That time it was Joe Lee, and underneath they go. And that is Big B. No, let's reset that. That's Trey Lechner. Lechner in and gets a couple of points. They have D1. four players in the mix there. D1, go ahead. I believe he's a D1 commit to uh, Wazoo. Well, that's good news. Here we go into front court now. You have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that's right. I think that's right. I, I believe we were talking about that during football, weren't we? We were. There we go. That's way off the top, but it did not hit the superstructure. It hit the top of the backboard, so it was in play. But that big thing that supports the basket, known as the superstructure, is what if it hits that, it's we are we think out of bounds, but it, there was a different call along those lines earlier. Usually it is. Well, that Joel was quick to say that it didn't hit the. Oh, earlier? Yeah, he said oh, he said okay. it hit the top of the hoop. Okay. I mean the backboard. I told him I didn't believe him, but <laughs> well, because he's a longtime Snohomish. Uh, oh, girls oh coach, yeah. So. I figured he was going to call it that way, you know. But, you know, Brian Hill didn't get worked up about it, so that I was going to go with Joel on that. <laughs> Stay out of trouble, too. We're always trying to get Joel to come up here, but, you know, he's yeah, well, partial to that. Well, it's a financial thing. He's, his price might be too high. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Second foul on Paxton Bigby and second team foul. Yeah, KRKO is probably paying him pretty good to come over there. <laughs> So <laughs> five point lead. That's a big bat shot right there. Whoa! And he hits it. Look at that. Nolan Soderstrom coming through with the three pointer. And it cuts it to a two point lead for Glacier Peak at the end of one quarter. 13 to 11 here on STSPN.com. Great start to the second game of our doubleheader. We'll return with more. Schwab tires. I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Don't stress, just save up to $200 on select tires with financing at our Les Schwab Fall Tire Sale. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Well, we just got a live shot from down at Quality <laughs> Control. Yeah. These two here watching the game, well, kind of. They can keep their eyes open. It's the uh, two Boston Terriers, Pinky and Bluey, which Debbie and I have down there at the condo at uh, Magnolia, where uh, she does, she gave feedback. So, yeah, she thinks the pitcher's doing well, no buffering, and everything seems to be doing just fine. But, yeah, these two. We'll see if she's really listening. <laughs> yeah, that's Debbie, right. Debbie, if you're really listening, send that picture to uh, sports. Uh, STSPN live at gmail.com. STSPN live at gmail.com. Send that picture of those two 
Adorables. Yeah, because we'll put that on the air. Well, <laughs> here? Can you do it during the game? Yeah. Oh, wow. Man, I keep forgetting it. Well, I shouldn't forget. It's just the technology level you're at is amazing. All right, there we go. Yeesh. Fade away that didn't fade enough in the right direction. Okay. I, th I think we have to get the camera down and uh, capture the cheerleaders saying STSPN Live because you need some ones I'm using. For they're a little bit old. Yeah, do it every year. Because you get a new set of uh, fresh faces. There they, they were just up here delivering something to our right. Love that part of it. Nate Duchesne over there, now principal here at Snohomish. He has fully climbed the ladder. Big oh, hello. That's a big one right there. Waldo comes through. So that is his first three and gets it back to a five point lead. That was 14 to 11, make that 13 to 11 at the end of the first quarter. Glacier Peak leading Snohomish. And we got a foul. Uh, it's going to put a Snohomish player at the line. That is Drew Davis. Foul is on Luke Zimmerman. His first foul, third team foul. I happen to know Waldo's mother, so I'm going to uh, oh, you save do. that clip for. <laughs> that will be nice with the three ball. Next one coming up as he didn't get the first one. Oh, misses both of them. Snohomish is 0 for 3 from the line so far. And it's all Drew Davis who hasn't made a foul shot. Think about that. Even hitting two of them will have it at a three-point deficit. Something he's got to work on early in the season. Get that through your and out of your system. Oh, bounding around. Snohomish gets the rebound. Davis overall doing a solid job getting in positioning. Works it around. Again, like the discipline of Snohomish trying to get the shot. There's Biggs up top. Okay, down to 10 on the shot clock. Biggs wants to take that guy. Yeah, he had the move and angle, but couldn't get it to drop. The other one blocked out of there. And we got a foul. There's a push off as the ball came loose. Looks like the foul is going to go against Amari Biggs. That would be his second foul. Third team foul, first here in the second quarter. And in for Snohomish is Isaac English, who's going to replace Amari Biggs. Oh, look at that. Behind, uh, if you see the guy in the red back there by the doors? Yeah. That's the uh, school board president, Jay Hagan. Oh, hi, Jay. Nice to have you here. Well, he looks like he's uh, got, a, has he got a Panther logo on over there. Well, oh, we'll yeah. Get back. There you go. Back to live action over here as uh, the Glacier Peak Grizzlies go from right to left. Now here comes Snohomish going that from left good. to right, at least briefly. Fourth turnover for the Panthers. Each team has four. 5.53 to go in the second quarter. Girls won earlier for Glacier Peak, 49 to 35. Now the boys are up by the five points. Glacier Peak in the girls game had a lead of 17 points as their biggest. All right, finally winning the battle there is Drew Davis. We've got a text from Jodell Harvey. She said we're coming in loud and clear. Oh, good. Look good. This would be at Harvey Field then? Harvey Airfield? It would be one of the Harvey. Very good. Nice. Thanks for the information there. We love to get feedback, make sure everything's coming through all right. And Todd puts those affidavits together for the Advertisers, we want to make sure everything's covered. <laughs> that is <laughs> right. There it goes. Out of bounds, last touched by the Panthers. Coming into the game for Glacier Peak will be Trey Lechner. Had six points last night in the 14-point win over Everett. Now back in for Snohomish is Nolan Soderstrom. And also in is senior Eli O'Hare. Soderstrom and O'Hare, both seniors. As Glacier Peak win bound just a tick under five minutes to go here in the second quarter. Way up high between the circles. There's just seven seconds left on the shot clock. 
Got to make something happen. The shot clock kind of goes a little crazy when it gets under 10 seconds. And it was spinning. It went up to 40-something seconds again. And then they didn't really know how many much time there was left. And then the clock goes off. And Panthers head coach Jeff Larson is going, wait a minute. We didn't know because when it, it looked like when it got to about maybe six or seven seconds, it just reloaded and went back to 40-something seconds and went all over the place. We saw that happen in the girls' game. The Panthers have it, 15 seconds now on the shot clock. Keep an eye on things there. And that was from way, way outside, practically to Sultan. i got to try and get a text over to Ellen Hawley and see if she'll video the girls, uh, the uh, cheerleaders there talking about STSBM. Well, I, you know, I just love the connections. When you, you get an idea, go, well, i got to contact so-and-so, and boom, it's taken care of. you got some pull up here. That's what it's like down here in small town. <laughs> well, it's a great area, I'll tell you what. And the foul this time is going to go against Nolan Soderstrom. That's his first second team foul. Glacier Peak with the five-point lead. We haven't seen points put on the board for a little bit by either team. Now under four minutes to go in the second quarter. The Panthers forcing them out high from blocking out. That doesn't find a resting place at the bottom of the net as Soderstrom comes racing through, gets a strong rebound, and the Panthers will have the ball in front court. That one's going to go off. Right there for the rebound is Luke Zimmerman. So 13-11 at the end of the first quarter, and the uh, coach for Glacier Peak, Steve McCary, says, you know, I think we want to talk things over here. We just need to... Kind of get in sync on some stuff, find out what we want to do, and he calls a timeout. So we got timeout. It's stspn.com. Back here at Snohomish High School, 3.31 to go in the first half. I'm Mark Ockett along with Todd Elvig and Sarah Elvig here. Really nice crowd. It's got a postseason feel about it here in the room. And they redid this room, this gym, about 10 years ago and took parts from the, and wood from the original gym, which was across the way, across the plaza, when they remodeled this one, renovated it, put another gym behind us. And this is definitely one of our favorite spots to come to. And across the valley, too, at Glacier Peak. Grizzlies with the basketball, 15 on the shot clock. Working it inside, and you can count that basket. That one is good for Trey Lechner. He's got four in the game, and he'll have a chance to make it a three-point play. Looks like that one is on Soderstrom. That would be a second foul. Fifth team foul. And at the foul line, Lechner with the foul shot coming up. This is the first attempt of a foul shot for Glacier Peak, so that means they're 0 for 1 with him missing that one. Snohomish gets the rebound. The guy grabbing it is Soderstrom. He's got a couple of key rebounds here, but a seven-point lead for Glacier Peak, which equals their biggest lead of the night. Earlier, they were up 11 to 4. Oh, Whoa, hello. That was just fun to watch as he had a perfect shot, Hudson Capelli, and he drains the three ball. That's a big three-pointer for Snohomish. Their second three ball of the game, Soderstrom hit one in the first quarter. Well, you catch up quick with those, don't you? Oh, you do. I mean, you're down by seven, now you're down by four. Panthers, pesky, working it in there. That's great effort by Paxton Bixby. Bigby. He's got eight points, his first two of the second quarter, and it's back to a six-point lead for the Grizzlies. Panthers coming across the midcourt line. He was in a toss-up for player of the game last night. Wound up going to Joe Lee, but. Yeah, I could see that as a Bigby had 13 points, Lee had 16, and also the other stuff they do out there. Taking it to the rack and missing will be Drew Davis 
Good move through the paint, but couldn't close the deal, and it's going to be Glacier Peak with the ball. Now, their biggest lead has been seven. They're up by six right now, and they have a chance to get their biggest lead of the game with under two minutes to go in the second quarter here at Snohomish. Now eight on the shot clock. I'm watching that to see if it goes haywire again. Yeah, it did. Right as they hit five seconds, it went to 49 seconds. And it's really difficult to know how much time is on the clock. There's a couple of taps at it there for the team that's got the ball because the clock starts going to weird numbers once it hits five seconds. Oh, hello, Nolan Soderstrom. Three points, it's a three-point game at 17 to 20. 20 to 17, three-point lead for Glacier Peak. They were up by seven, it's down to three. Panthers working hard for the board. I think there's gonna be a foul against Glacier Peak. The guy in there was Hudson Capelli getting control of the ball. Tom Friel was right on top of it and he's gonna call the foul. It's gonna be on Sam Waldo, his first Fourth team foul, we got a substitution for Peak. Coming in is Nate Spang, also in for Snohomish will be Jason Roth. You know, uh, we expect clock problems up there at Glacier Peak, but not down here in Snohomish. Yeah, they, what's going on with they, that? Because they spend the money down here. Oh, I was waiting, I knew that was coming in at some point. It only took us uh, six quarters to get there. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, it picked off. Then that was a chance for the Panthers to tie the game with a three ball, but instead Glacier Peak will go the other direction as the Panthers have been picking up steam heading closer to halftime with 47 on the clock here in the second quarter. Look inside, nothing available. Glacier Peak with the dark uniforms on, moving it around now here, 10 seconds on the clock. Good cut down the baseline and it's good as he finds him and making the basket is Waldo. He's got five in the game, all in the quarter. A five point lead for Glacier Peak. Snohomish is had six turnovers so far here in the game. Boy, that Waldo guy, he's a pretty good player. Yeah, he definitely has looked really, oh, and there's another one. Another one for Hudson Capelli. Wow, he's hit two big three-pointers. He and Nolan Soderstrom each have two. That counts for 12 of the 20, and Snohomish is down just by two points. Great, great game here at Snohomish. Yeah, we got a blocking foul. It was a late foul on that one, Steve Landro gets the call and he saw it, he was right in back of the play. That's gonna go against Drew Davis, his second foul, sixth team foul, it'll be two shots and at the foul line is Joe Lee. The he had a three ball like in the much. first quarter. I don't oh. think the crowd can get too angry because these are really veteran. They are, they're uh, great officials, all three officials. of them. Yep. Steve Landro, Tom Friel and Michael McFadden, they're all three veteran seasoned referees. That's probably why they brought him in, because the Cross Valley game, you don't want yeah, to have any yeah, mistakes that's on that. Exactly. And this is one the top refs want to do. They want to be at the great games. Miss on the first one, make on the second one. And what we got here? I don't know, somebody violate the line? They took the point off. Oh yeah, it would be a lane violation, good catch. That, you know, you go quickly and go, okay, what could that be? And so they just will give the ball back. That'll go as a turnover to Snohomish. Six for each team now as the Panthers will get set to inbound. There's only 3.2 seconds left to go here in the quarter. And they roll it up. Now you got to get across. There we go. Oh, if that goes in. Oh, it was awfully close. Very close for Jason Roth. We're at halftime. We got us a great game here in the second game of the doubleheader. Just what we were hoping for in the cross valley battle between Glacier Peak and Snohomish. The Grizzlies leading the Panthers by just two points at halftime after being up by seven a couple of times in the first half. This is STSPN.com, your worldwide home for high school sports. Better believe it. SWIC is an acronym and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back. And, you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Bolt back to switch, doctor. Request immediate contact. Strike, take it on now. 
here on the team. You know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know them personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood and it's a, it's a real brotherhood and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood and that, that's what matters. Daniel's Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniel's the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniel's and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniel's. SWIC is an acronym, and it stands for Special Warfare Combatant Craft Crewman. You know, you, you can stand across from another guy and say, you know what, he's got your back, and you know, that's the guy you're counting on. If, if something goes wrong, he's going to be there. In the end, we're, we're fighting for each other. Here on the team, you know, about 22 of us on the boat. You know them personally, so you know exactly whose life you have in your hands. Everyone's come together, and everyone's sole mission is to do their job individually as best they can to benefit everyone else in the boat. I got a brotherhood, and it's a, it's a real brotherhood, and it's a loyal and honest brotherhood, and that, that's what matters. Sending it big. Oh, In for a good run, let's go. Come with us to the track, to the trails, to the slopes, to the surf, to the fight, to the race. Look at this. To the 4 a.m. starts, training harder, pushing further, hitting back, hard. To the fans the followers and the haters come with us to the blood to the sweat and the broken bones you rehab we never quit we never give up we take control to the world titles to the world's first 
The world's best. UFC strawweight champion. Come with us. We're just getting started. It's going to be so much fun. I promise you. People say that there's no such thing as superheroes. That superhuman strength is only something you read about in comic books. They say men can't fly and they can't breathe underwater. That's because they don't know my dad. The Navy SEAL Foundation is committed to supporting the warriors and families of naval special warfare. Join us at NavySEALFoundation.org. Yes. We are back here less than a minute to go till we start the second half. And again, a very special thank you to our sponsors. And we'll read them off for you. Airfield Espresso bringing us the parachute punch tonight. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Heather, very much. Adrenaline Fundraising, American Family Insurance with Sally Petty, Les Schwab Tires, always doing the right thing. GNS Heating, Cooling, and Air Conditioning, Gene Johnson Plumbing, McDaniels Do It Center, Monster Beverage, and the Army and Navy and uh, the Navy SEAL Foundation. Anybody else? Did I miss anybody? Oh, there's probably get somebody. Him? All right. Well, if we did, we didn't mean it. We'll get That's you right. on the air at some point. Uh, you know that. But uh, hey, before it starts, you, don't we have something we want to show I, I think you actually have a picture sent up from the Quality Control Center in Magnolia of uh, two of our quality control officers. <laughs> they, they, those guys are like on the job. They're kind of taking a little break right there. That is uh, <laughs> that Pinky and Bluey. Pinky... Uh, with the paws stretched out, and Bluey, who's totally out. Um, yeah, well, I guess they were just taking a break, but those are our nine-month-old Boston Terriers as they make their <laughs> television so debut. Great. Can you believe this? Now, they've been Pinky to ball and Bluey. games, they've been to Bark in the Park, they've been, to, uh, you know, and now they're on television <laughs> within nine months. Love that. We have got to get that to the original breeder down in Burien because they are going to go nuts when they see that they've been on TV. But here we are on TV, and it's a two-point game. 22 to 20, 
as Glacier Peak now goes from left to right as you view it. That is really nice ball movement that time. Good thinking, really, by the player for uh, Glacier Peak. That would be Paxton Bigby. I have the, this great information I was referring to earlier I want to get to. And this uh, tall Tom put this together. We were talking earlier this week. Oh, my gosh, look at that. Uh, the cl shot clock was about to go off, so he fired it, almost put it in. That's going to go out of bounds. Want to do mention first off the leading scorer for Glacier Peak, Paxton Bigby. He has eight, five for Sam Waldo, four each for Joe Lee and Trey Lechner, two for Nate Spang. Snohomish with the ball in front court, down by two. They were down by seven twice, and they managed to cut it to a two point deficit at halftime. Look at that move. It looked really good, except didn't quite fall in there for a basket. Out of bounds, last touch by the Snohomish Panthers. Now, the, the uh, information that comes from Tall Tom, they have a whole extra department just for that. Oh, yeah. It's, you yeah. know, it's, yeah, absolutely. That is uh, on another wing of uh, the station over there. <laughs> I said, you got to see the old mainframe computer they have there so nobody can break <laughs> into it. It's DOS. Okay? <laughs> That's the way it is. Goes back to the Larimer Road days. There's a long shot, and that's going to come off the rim. We'll have to talk to Scott Dahl about get, opening up the purse strings a little bit over there. <laughs> no, actually, it's great because you can't break into it from the outside. There is a tremendous play inside. Drew Davis gets the basket off the pass on the baseline. And it is now a tie game, tied for the second time. The last time was 2-2. Two to two. Oh. Air ball. Come on, Choli. Anybody's ball game. Here at Snohomish, look at that. Oh, man. He had that and didn't get the finish. Tied at 22, coming up on two minutes into the third quarter. Great Here game. Here at the home of the Panthers. Oh, my gosh. Glacier Peak moving it around. Snohomish defense is just really stifling. They've been tough throughout. Glacier Peak with eight turnovers. Snohomish with six. Want to touch on... Nolan Soderstrom and Hudson Capelli, the leading scorers for the Panthers. That is a work of art right there as he swings through and drops one by. Joe Lee now with six points, and it's back to a two-point lead for Glacier Peak. So Soderstrom and Capelli each, Capelli each with two three-pointers for six points. Amari Biggs with four points all in the first quarter. Two each for Jason Roth and Drew Davis. Snohomish 0 for 3 from the foul line. And Glacier Peak is 0 for 2. That's wow, in. look at that move. Davis working hard. He's got all four points for the Panthers here. Tied at 24. This is going to be a great second half. I love having the, we're up top, the very top, so we've got the wall behind me. So I can kick back and just enjoy it and call it and breathe in the fine air here in Snohomish. That's a timeout, 30-second timeout. So, you know, while we have the time, let me take in, this is what Tom put together. I love this. So Jim Adams, now when I was here from 92 to 96 before I went back east, before I came back, that um, he was the head coach of the Panthers here. Now in 85, uh, fifth place team, they beat Richland and lost to Mercer Island at, along the way with Quinn Snyder, who was a longtime coach of the Utah Jazz, and Brian Schwabe. I was at that game at the Seattle Center Coliseum when Ed Pebble finally won his first state title in 85. In 87, they finished fifth, beat Pasco, lost to Richland, lost to Blanchett. Also, Nate Duchesne, who is across the way, keeping order <laughs> around the band, the students, and also keeping an eye on us, is the principal here at Snohomish. And he played here. He so also played, yeah, he played at Montana. His daughter played here. And she was a phenom. Oh, my gosh, she was good. And that's going to go out of bounds. Glacier Peak turns it over for the ninth time. So then Nate had a successful coaching career. Most notably at Stanwood, he coached Ryan Appleby, the future Husky, who's a great guy who we had on the air with us over time, and I hope he's doing really well in life. That's going to be a miss, and Glacier Peak's going to get the basketball tied at 24. Tied for the third time in the game. The lead has not switched hands. Glacier Peak led it 2 to nothing, then it was 2-2. Two oh. two. That's a steal. Snohomish continues with the defense. There's Biggs, misses, and Glacier Peak getting the job done. That's twice here in the third quarter that Snohomish has not been able to finish 
and they'd be up by four points right now had they been able to do that. Panthers get another crack at it. Biggs with a double team around him. That's going to go out of bounds. Now I can say that uh, Nate Duchesne was a fan of STSPN at least before he was principal. I can't speak to him. Well, we're going to we'll find a, that out as it goes along. And it, we want him to be a fan, so, you know. Oh, we'll, oh yeah. We'll get I just don't want to speak for him as the principal here. Yeah, but I tell you what, he's got a commanding presence over there. He, oh, has, he has done well in administration. I've got more on the Nate Duchesne story coming up. It's all part of the Panther uh, Jim Adams coaching tree. There we go. Our poster has fallen down. And the three, oh, the two-pointer is good. That's Drew Davis. Davis putting the Panthers on his back here in the third quarter. He's got all six. And the lead switches hands for the first time as Nahomish leads it by two, 26-24. Wow, they have really come marching back. They were down 18 to 11. So they've outscored Glacier Peak 15 to six. Halfway through the third quarter. That one's really loose. We finally got a whistle. Again, our officiating crew, a very good one. Steve Landro, Tom Friel, and Michael McFadden. That is going to be a foul called. It looks like, is it English who's out there? Yeah. Isaac English, his first first team. Davis is going to come out and popping back into Soderstrom. Davis gives you really strong, hard-fought minutes, so you want to keep his legs fresh. Offensive foul against Glacier Peak. It'll be their first foul of the second half. First foul on Trey Lechner, and the Panthers will get it back. 11 turnovers against Glacier Peak. Look at this game, a two-pointer. Snohomish with the basketball. Yeah, so Glacier Peak also at 11 to four, so they've been up by seven twice. And Snohomish finally getting on top. That's a long one. Just finds the back of the rim. Almost to travel. Good presence of mind by Lechner not to keep going with that basketball. 319 to go in the third quarter. Mark Ockett, Todd Elvig, Sarah Elvig here, keeping you on top of things. That's a good bouncer. Lechner with his first two of the second half. He has six in the game, and we are tied at 26. Tied for the fourth time. Maybe this way, the rest of the way. You got to love it. Playoff atmosphere. Feels like we're playing in February right now or March. Knocked out. That's going to go back to Glacier Peak as they go to our right. Now, Brian Hunter, who's taken a year sabbatical as the boys coach at Glacier Peak, Scheduled to be back next year after 14 seasons. The original coach, both named Brian. Brian Hill for the girls, Brian Hunter for the boys. Anyway, he coached under Nate Duchesne at Stanwood. And we got a foul coming up. This is going to go against Nahomish. I think it's on Soderstrom. Yep, that's his third foul. They're going to have to bring him out. Second team foul. And at the line with two shots will be Trey Lechner. Our little helper there. Here, give that to him for as a, as a thank you. Oh, very good. Some uh, swag and SPS, STSPN for fixing the banner. That's yours, free of charge. Yeah, yeah, a souvenir. Now you, you have to give him a press pass to hang on there. Yeah. There's, uh, <laughs> Lechner connects on the first one. Second one rims out, so he's one for three from the foul line. He's As the Panthers down by one, lead switches hands for the second time. Davis, oh man, this guy's been so good. They got him back in there. He's got eight points, all eight of Snohomish's points here in the third quarter with 2.17 to go in the third. Panthers just playing great defense throughout. Tight on the man to man, here they come, and then flipping around. Oh, traveling. Traveling call, or let's check now. I don't think so. Oh, That's going to go against Roth. I thought I saw some kind of hand movement like that. Is, it did look like he was going to do that. Roth with his first foul, third team. And it's going to be Glacier Peak to inbound. What a great way to get S December started with the games here, Todd. You had one a couple nights ago, and then we got the doubleheader tonight, and games continue next week. Yeah, I've got a clip queued up that's... Uh... Oh, so close. Panthers back on top. 
and they want to get some more. 145 to go third quarter. Gonna be a great finish here. There's the shot. Rimming out of there. Oh, nice move underneath. How about that? Isaac English, perfect positioning and smart playing by English. Three point lead for the Panthers. This is their biggest lead of the game. They are peaking in the second half at the right time. Here we go. Glacier Peak, long range jumper. God! Oh my goodness, that was perfect from Sam Waldo, his second three of the game. And we are tied at 30. Tied for the fifth time here tonight. Cooper Jensen back in, no points for him tonight. He had nine in the win over Everett at Everett last night. So Glacier Peak on the road quite a bit here at the front end of the season. They had that one at home canceled on Tuesday. Then they have four in a row scheduled on the road. This is the second of those four. That's going to be thrown away. Panther turnover number nine, tied at 30. Under a minute to go, third quarter. Drive to the basket. Oh, man, he just made it look easy that time. That's Joe Lee. Joe Lee is going to be a name you're going to hear a lot on STSPN.com. He's just a sophomore. 16 points last night. He's got eight tonight, and he is a good one. Lee is 6-1. Davis tried to cram it in there, nearly get, does get it back. I can't believe there wasn't a foul on that. I thought I saw an elbow in there. Boy, I did too. On a shoulder, I thought Davis knocked him down. Davis has 10 points, tied up again, 32-32. 10 points in the quarter, 12 in the game. He is the high point scorer for both teams now. He's had a heck of a quarter. Wow, with the floater, Joe Lee. It's Lee versus Davis. Oh, off the top of the board. 34-32. I'm gonna pull that last play up in slow motion. Are you gonna do that right now before we yep. go to break? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Let's, I, I think there was a little something there in the middle. Let's see here. Takes it away. Comes back. Oh, there's a there was a shoulder charge. That's there. what I thought. I thought that was. Yeah, I mean, but it, they let him go. Yeah, and that's so right. Let him play. 34-32. It's a two-point game, just like it was at halftime, although Snohomish did have the lead for a spell. We're going to take a break. we got an awesome fourth quarter coming up. Throughout the world, tell your friends where it's at, stspn.com. This is where the fun is. We are back here live. It is 34 to 32 as Glacier Peak picking up 12 points in that quarter and Snohomish with 12 as well. So they stayed even as far as the amount of points they scored in the quarter and the distance between the two as far as the total points are concerned. It is 34 32. How about that? In the girls game, Glacier Peak won 49 to 35. Snohomish getting up in that third quarter Lead switched hands four times, and we've been tied six times. Those numbers could go up exponentially here in the fourth quarter as the Panthers have the basketball in their white uniforms. Glacier Peak and the dark ones out there. Second game of our doubleheader here on STSPN. You guys haven't played each other for a while due to the pandemic and such. Three-pointer oh. again, Hudson Capelli with three. And it puts the Panthers up by one. Good for them. Man, just some amazing rainbows out here. Joe Lee just had that one go off. He's the left-handed shooter out there for Glacier Peak. Has 10 points at six in the last quarter. There's Davis out on the right side. Didn't get it this time, and that would be Capelli. It's out of bounds, last touch, according to Tom Friel, by Snohomish. You got to know Brian Hunter's watching this. Oh, I'm sure. Well, 
I'm not sure with the sabbatic if he wants to come to the games well, or not. He, or? he let us know the last time he was watching, so I'm sure he's watching. Okay, this time. well, Brian, if you're out there, we, man, we loved all you did, and look forward to seeing you again. And what a game we have here! You now, Brian and both Brian's over at Glacier Peak, tremendous to get set before the game, get the current information and ready to go. So we're prepared to uh, give our viewers as much as we can information-wise. So thank you to both of them. Oh, there's a turnover. There he goes, Nahomish out of backcourt. Here they come. Oh, he was straining and really did what you have to do there. He wasn't going to be able to get a shot off, so he hung in the air long enough, and he got a foul. Drew the foul. So that foul is going to go against Cooper Jensen, his first. Second team foul. Two shots. There's one. Jason Roth is at the foul line. First trip to the line, and he has a total of three points in the game. Panthers can match their biggest lead in the game of three points, which they held earlier at 30 to 27. Held ball, off the miss. It's going to go back to Glacier Peak, so just a two-point lead, but the Panthers glad to be back up on top. What an entertaining night here, and a lot of people getting to experience it live or through STSPN.com or both. Some people bring their mobile device with them to the games. Well, that's because of the superior announcing. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you. But it's all about the visuals. <laughs> there you go. Drive to the basket. We got a whistle that's going to be last touched by Snohomish. Tom Friel taking the lead on that call right there. Well, they're going to talk about it for a second. Six oh eight to go, fourth quarter. Two point lead for the Panthers here in their home den. And now it'll be Glacier Peak way outside. Snohomish has been playing great defense throughout this game. I have a tidbit for you. Well, we got a whistle on the floor. It looks like something came, oh, the piece that they put the volleyball net in with. What, what's your tidbit? Uh, Snohomish has never beaten Glacier Peak. So if they win tonight, that would be a it's first. Gonna, it's going to be unbelievable. Yeah, through all the years, the girls have won, but yeah, because we've, we've seen it go both ways. Yeah, both ways. So this is that's confirmed, right? Yeah. Who's your source? I think you're right. Me. Yeah, because we have talked about that in the past. Well, Snohomish is up by two. They smell it. I got to tell they you, they do. Smell it. They do. Shot over off the left side, no good by Davis. Oh. And stolen away, can he make it happen? And he's gonna draw the foul. Again, smart move underneath. Ball control, you gotta yes. control the rock. And that is gonna be a foul against Glacier Peak. Jason Roth getting it done. Now goes to the line for the second time. Joe Lee called for the foul, his first. Third team foul. We got a timeout on the floor. This is a full 60, 525 to go. Fourth quarter here at Snohomish. We'll be back with more exciting action after this break. I think Snohomish smells some blood in the water. 
We are back live. It's a two-point lead for the Snohomish Panthers and two shots coming up for Jason Roth. I'm Mark Ockett with Todd Elvig and Sarah Elvig here. And a whole lot of close friends from both Snohomish and Glacier Peak High School. Gets the first one. Snohomish matches her biggest lead at three points. And now four. How about that? 38-34 Panthers as Glacier Peak coming out of backcourt. Joe Lee, the sophomore, 10 points. Six of them in the third quarter. So far, none here in the fourth. Kicks it out over on the left side. That guy, one of the newer players in, Caden Zener. He's uh, called up from JV. Oh, look out. Look at that. Stolen away. Turnover number 13 for Glacier Peak. Panthers coming out. Now they've been really methodical with their offensive set. There it is. Off the rim. Batted around. Glacier Peak doing a good job getting the rebound. I like it in the chat. They noticed that the uh, shot clock has been kind of bouncing around. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, it gets to five seconds. It's seeming to have some kind of a seizure or something out there. So that is going to go out of bounds. Oh. Last touch by the Grizzlies. Panthers will have the basketball. Their debut and getting things started here for Jeff Larson, who is the principal over at Glacier Peak. Now yeah, he's done color for us. Now teaching math over here and the head coach got an invite to come back over here and here he is. So a foul is called. Tom Friel gives us the indication. That foul is on Cooper Jensen, his second. Team foul number four. And they'll have the inbound. That one's on the floor. Okay, up top they go with the basketball. Hudson Capelli. Biggs has been kind of quiet for a couple quarters. They've just been playing him tight, that's for sure. Seems to always draw at least a double team whenever he gets the ball. He had four points in the first quarter. There he goes, nice move. Kick out. Oh, just off the mark. Now it looks like Davis went out of bounds. He did. Well, I want to finish this here. So Jeff Larson was head coach at Redmond for eight years. He was a head coach at Redmond for eight years, then associate principal in 2012, and became principal at Glacier Peak for four years. How about that? And now he's coaching the Panthers. Four-point lead for Snohomish. 3.30 to go in the fourth quarter. They go on the right baseline. He's working at it. Yeah, there's a foul. Davis was in pretty tight on it. And really good work by Cooper Jensen to draw that foul as he worked inside and just kept crawling on the baseline until he either got a shot off or a foul. That foul is going to go on Davis for his second foul. Team foul number four. Those are even up, each team with four. Ooh. Really rims out of there. Well, he's a wide receiver. What do you expect? Yeah. Jensen looks more like a tight end. Jensen's going to give it a shot here. Good-sized guy. There it is. Jensen's 6'6". That is tight end size. Here we go. Three-point lead as Snohomish brings the ball to backcourt. Facing the trap at midcourt. Bounce pass is good. Excuse me, it'll be a kick ball. Lee was just trying to reach out and did that as an act of natural behavior. Wasn't doing anything, trying to do anything illegal. It just happened. Snohomish will inbound. Biggs double teamed again as he's had to deal with a lot. No fouls. The player goes down. That's going to be thrown towards backcourt, out of bounds. Panthers turn it over for the 11th time. So here's the story. When Jim Wilson was re not, uh, left the school after this year at, uh, last year at Snohomish, um, then Mark Perry asked Jeff Larson if he was interested in coaching again. He said yes, and he's now coaching in his first year here after eight years at Redmond, and he is a math teacher here at Snohomish High School. How about that? So that is working the Jim Adams tree and well, you allow know, me to use all that information to all Tom all that information so diligently came, to put together. All that information came from a Hall of Famer. 
That's right, a Snohomish High School Hall of Famer, Tom Lafferty, who's part of our broadcast crew. Who's steaming because I got the two games tonight. He, he had to yield to a non-Hall of Famer. There you go. All right, we have a timeout called by Glacier Peak, 38-35, 241 to go in the fourth quarter. We say you want to keep it here? Yeah, yeah sure. I want to keep it here. Okay, I got I, stuff too. I've got a, uh, I've got a, uh, you make the call. Oh, I've okay. never seen this in my 13 years. All right, this is from so what, last night? From, from uh, Wednesday night. From Wednesday night, okay. Yeah. This is over at Everett. So that's Cooper Jensen, right? Yeah. He grabs the hoop, holds on, he, his dunk didn't work it, but he grabbed the ball and put it back through. Oh, wow, so he was still in the air when he, he had dunked it, tried to dunk it, it right. didn't go in, the ball came out, and then he, he double dunked it. It's Grabbed almost on, like a double oh, doink. Grab the ball and put it, put it back in. Isn't that something? I don't that was think I've ever seen that either. That was illegal. It was called illegal. Okay, because that's probably why we don't see it. <laughs> Snohomish with the ball in front court. 13 on the shot clock. Biggs. That's going to be deflected by Glacier Peak and go out of bounds. I was just going to say for Glacier Peak. They will be playing six days from now is their next game, so they get a little bit of a break after having a couple back-to-back. -back. That'll be at Lincoln down in Seattle playing the Lynx, who came back online in 2019. Hell ball. Oh. It's a hell ball. That's a great hustle. Yeah. There. Yeah, they're a little, let's get a little yeah. chippy now. Well, you got a great rivalry right here. And it's going to go to Snohomish with the alternating possession arrow. Panthers basketball. So that's December 8th, 7.30 at Lincoln, and then Glacier Peak is all the way down in Sumner, just off Traffic Avenue in Sumner, down there at Sumner High School. And that's a 1 p.m. game. That's on Saturday, December, December 10th, and they don't get home again, for a game at least, until December 16th, a Friday night, two, nights for, two weeks from tonight, 7.15 against Ferndale. So they've got some road travels coming. Which actually does sharpen you up, too. Playing with this crowd like this. Thrown out of bounds. It's going back to Glacier Peak. Turnover number 12 for the Panthers. Two minutes exactly to go. We got a timeout on the floor. This is a full timeout called by Glacier Peak. We will now take a timeout. This is STSPN.com. Daniels Do It Center is located in beautiful Snohomish, Washington. Locally owned and operated for over 40 years, they are proud to provide the Snohomish Valley with exceptional hardware, tools, lawn and garden, and sporting goods products. Their commitment to delivering legendary customer service and their outstanding employees continue to make McDaniels the best and one of the most recognized Do It Best centers in the nation. Stop by and experience for yourself the difference between McDaniels and the big box stores. Discover why so many people are choosing to shop at McDaniels. Our presenting sponsor tonight, Airfield Espresso. I have a parachute punch in my hand, and as you can see, I have like an inch and three-eighths left because I tried to pace myself for the doubleheader, and it's going to work unless they go into like four or five overtimes, which could happen. So thank you, Heather and everybody, Airfield Espresso, our presenting sponsor, and bringing us the great treats here tonight. We appreciate it. Three-pointer! This time it's Bigby, Paxton Bigby. He's hit his first three-pointer of the game, couldn't come at a better time. Team tied for the seventh time tonight. Yep, here it comes. Just Ooh. off the backside, Snohomish has been getting cooler on those three-point shots. Tied at 38 from way outside, yes! Hudson Capelli with four three-pointers in this game. It is a three-point lead for the Panthers. Timeout called by Glacier Peak. Wow, what a game. 
This has just been a great night of basketball. And I know the score in the first game was rather one-sided, but still the Panthers in that one battled Glacier Peak very well, even though losing by 14. And then in this one, it has been a seven-point lead a couple of times for Glacier Peak at 11 to four and 18 to 11. But Snohomish tightened it up at halftime to make it 22-20. It stayed a 22-point lead for Glacier Point Peak in the end of the third quarter. And then now Snohomish on top by three and Glacier Peak calling the timeout as they'll have the basketball. Let's see if they can match with another three-pointer once again. You probably hear in the background of the Snohomish High School Band, you see him across the way. Tom Friel, the referee, got a big smile on his face. Why? Because we all have smiles on our faces because we love being here. Oh, look at, we got uh, Mark Perry over there. He's doing a little bit of filming. Aha, uh -huh, there I you think go. He's, I think he's anticipating a win. Mark Perry, the longtime athletic director here at Snohomish High School. Previously, longtime head football coach. And I believe he also went to high school here. He, he goes way back. A yeah, lot of people return. And that's, that's typical for Snowman. And it's fantastic. Yeah. Coming up on a minute to go here in the fourth quarter. One to go right now. Drive in. Yes. Cooper Jensen makes it a one-point game. Panthers coming out of backcourt. This place is loud. Just the type of way you want it to be. There's a trap on the double team and a whole ball that is going to go to Glacier Peak. That's what I thought. Panthers give it up on the hell ball that time. Great 44. hustle as they came out tight on him. And here come the Grizzlies out of backcourt. That's Joe Lee. Steve McCary calling out from the base. Oh, lost out of bounds by the Grizzlies. Panthers will have it. Whistle on the floor. We're going to change of players. Coming in is Drew Hansen for Isaac English. Panthers with the basketball, one point lead, 30 on the shot clock, 32.9 in the quarter. We got, there's been a timeout called. And it's called by Snohomish. Let's take a break. Build the energy up. Fans go grab something to drink or whatever. Get ready to go. We got the rest of this fourth quarter coming up. Stay tuned. Thanks to Les Schwab tires, I'm a confident vaccine driver, but mom's a little stressed about spending. Remember, deep breaths and watch your speed. Even though we're watching our wallets, Les Schwab is still watching out for our safety. So it's right here. Don't stress, just save up to $200 on select tires with financing at our Les Schwab Fall Tire Sale. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Thirty-two seconds. You know that's uh, it's not football, right? Thirty-two seconds is eternity in basketball. That's correct. One point lead. Snohomish on top, forty-one forty, and we have confirmation from uh, the computers over at KRKO through Tom Lafferty here that the Snohomish Panthers have never beaten Glacier Peak in boys basketball or in football. They have won numerous times in basketball, and we. Got a foul call that is going to go against. You were checking they don't have my the stat? right person up there. Okay, Snohomish ends up with the ball. That, there's going to be a grab. That foul should be right. That should be on Sam Waldo, his second foul, 16. Okay. Well, they put 11. Oh, that is on uh, Zener. He was a late add on the roster. So Zener got one. There's Panthers with the ball driving to the basket. And that is going to be uh, intentional foul, possibly a flagrant foul. They're going to discuss this as it was definitely deliberate. We just have to see how they term it. Tom Friel and Michael McFadden talking things over as to how they want to do this. Friel crossed his arms when he made the call. 
Now he's going to talk to Steve Landro. Obviously a big part of the game. 23.2 seconds to go. Let's see what it looks like on film. Yeah, let's take a look at this. I mean, it, it's just a degree. Yeah, I don't know. So it is an intentional foul called against Jolie, his second, seventh team foul. And we got a shot coming up, two of them actually. Miss on the first one. You got to hit these things. No, why wasn't, why does this thing keep playing? And that's Drew Hansen at the line. Next one on the way. He thuds on that one. I'm double checking, yep. And so the Panthers will have the ball. No ejection. 41-40, 23.2 to go fourth quarter. And we got a full timeout called by Glacier Peak. We'll be back with more. And it is nuts in here, here on STSPN.com. All right, we are back live, 41-40. Snohomish will have the ball. There were two shots that were missed. Boy, this is a big by night Drew for Hansen, And then they get the ball after the intentional foul. There's gonna be a foul right there. I mean, it, obviously he wanted to do what he could to stop the action right there. And that's gonna be team foul number eight. So it is bonus time, it's gonna be one and one. Yeah, that foul goes against for. Cooper Jensen, his third. And at the foul line is Jason Roth. Roth is three for four from the line. I think Roth might be from a famous. Uh, There's one. Famous uh, Snohomish family. This is a big shot coming up. They all are, because uh, you want to get it, and you can get a chance to get it to a three point lead where. Glacier Peak would have to get a three to tie. No, now they can get a three to win it. Okay, shot clock is dead. Here we go. 15 seconds. Joe Lee with the basketball down court, and he throws oh. it away. And a foul coming across by Sam Waldo. Waldo will be whistled for his third foul, and it should be one and one. Team foul number nine. Want to double check on that? They got to sort a couple things out. No, they're they're going to call that on Big B. They say, okay. I thought it was 23. At the foul line, Panthers going to give it another shot. There's one right there. Wow, big foul shooting by Jason Roth. This will ice it right here. Panthers by three points at 43 to 30, matching their biggest lead of the game. Jeff Larson trying to get a victory in his Snohomish Panther debut. Here we go. Out of there. Okay, they can tie it with a three ball. Five seconds. And stolen away. Panthers with the ball and Biggs. Yes! Snohomish has done it. First time in school history. They have defeated the Glacier Peak Grizzlies in boys basketball going back to 2008. Wow, this is a piece of history. Look at that crowd. They're going crazy in here. The Snohomish Panthers 
have finally done it. They have defeated the Glacier Peak Grizzlies for the first time in school history. They're Cross Valley rivals. Glacier Peak and Snohomish, 45 to 40 to score. As Glacier Peak players and fans dejectedly leave the uh, gym and the Panthers with one heck of a comeback to get this one. They were trailing by seven points a couple of times earlier on, 11 to four and 18 to 11, and they end up getting the job done. Now here's how they got the job done also in the fourth quarter. Todd Snohomish outscored Glacier Peak 13 to six in that final quarter. That is a telling statement right there. And I'll tell you the guy that was so instrumental in all this was Jason Roth. He hit five foul shots in that quarter. Who are you gonna get for uh, player of the game? You know what, Jason did such a great job at the end, but Drew Davis was really such a huge factor in that third quarter. He had 10 points plus the the rebounding and such inside. I I think I gotta go with Drew Davis in a very close second place to Jason Roth. What number? So Drew Davis is 30, 31, 31 is, is the uh, number we're gonna go down and Sarah's gonna go down and get the jubilant Drew Davis. This place is crazy loud with the band playing, fans all over the court. This is a historic night in Snohomish and Glacier Peak history. It finally happened, 31, yep. So we'll have him up here soon. Yeah, boy, this is an amazing night. Wow, I mean, this has just been something So happy for Snohomish. Yeah, it's just, you know, all these years they've been trying to do it. They haven't done it yet in football. It'll happen at some point, but. Yeah, know, next year's probably a good shot. Glacier Peak is gonna be way down next year. So we're gonna see this our player of the game. two years in a row. Quick. They might go, they might go uh, win the basketball and then come and win football. So we always know Snohomish has got plenty of great talent. Both schools do. They're all competitive across the board. And it might take a little bit for us to get Drew Davis up here for the postgame show, 6'4", junior forward. So he's here this year and next year. Snohomish with just two seniors on the roster. One of them is Amari Biggs, the other one, Nolan Soderstrom. But the rest of the uh, roster is very much junior dominated. They have six juniors on this squad. Add one more to that, seven juniors and one freshman, no sophomores. So we got the gift of the T-shirt for Drew and also the STSPN lanyard. Yeah, there a lot of is. merch. Player of the game, yeah. Swag, you're gonna have to start getting these guys swag bags. And the yeah. girls, look at this. There he Let's is. Let's get Drew, can we, can we have him, we want him right up front here. Let's get Drew in, that's for you too, your swag. We're gonna get him all set up for the post game interview here on STSPN.com as Drew will be getting the headphones on or the cans as we call oh, it. Cool. We'll get that cord out from, let's get your microphone up a little bit. There you go. Okay, awesome. there you go. As we'll get, go ahead and spread that out. That's gonna be on social media. Awesome. Hey, Drew, great job, man. Thank you. That was a heck of a performance. And okay, we got you for 12 points. That's part of the story. 10 of those points in the third quarter. As I said, when you, it became 26-24 and you had scored the first six points for the Panthers, you literally had picked the team up and put it on your back. And uh, tell us about that, coming out of halftime. Honestly, it's just energy. I mean, we knew that they were gonna come out strong. Am I talking too loud? No, you're fine. Okay. The I band's like a little loud, though. You're fine. Um, we knew that they were gonna be coming out with energy and wanting to beat us. Like, I mean, we're rival teams, so we just had to come out with more energy than them. That's all it was. And we just out-hustled them, out-boarded them, and we just had to ultimately out- outplay them. Uh, you guys definitely played extremely hard, and, and obviously they give their best. And to come out on top in something like that, this is a historic win. Do you know this is the first time? Yeah, it's the first time we've ever beat them. Ever. And they came uh, on board as a school in 2008. I mean, you guys are a part of Snohomish history and Glacier Peak history, and that this was the game. And so, uh, I mean, uh, obviously when we let you go here, you guys are going to have a, a great uh, time in the, in the locker room and everything afterwards. Uh, what does it feel like to uh, be a part of that? Honestly, it's a pretty good feeling. Yeah. It's a, we're just, the whole team, we're just like a family together. So 
having this kind of win, it just it's it's going to bring us together so much more than it already has. Yeah, and to start the season like this, so first game under head coach Jeff Larson, what's it like getting his system in, and what wrinkles, new type of things or differences does he have from the previous coach? Um, we, I don't know. He's everything's just different. I mean, he's trying to make his own. I guess way into the program. He's a new coach. We're just, everyone's still trying to figure everyone out, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, it's we're all just connecting really well, I guess. Can, yeah. you, can you repeat the question? I guess I'm just not really fully understanding. No, I'm just it. saying, how is it with him coming in as head coach? I think it's good. I think it's good to have like a fresh eyes yeah. and like set of just everything, I guess, in a way. I mean, I love Wilson, but I mean, it's always good to just have like a new fresh. Something different something, to get things going. So you're I guess. you're a uh, junior. Which is great because obviously you got all this season coming up and next year and being a part of what could be something special. Yeah, for that's sure. That's got to be a great feeling. So, hey, congratulations. Way to go, adrenaline player of the game. We we really loved your effort out there, not just with the points, but just the bulk and just the, you know, the intensity you brought to the game, the passion. Keep it up. It's a team effort. Yep, there you go. Well, Thank you're a great you. part of that team. That's Drew Davis. Thank you. Folks, Thank you. Uh, this uh, is, you, yeah, you betcha. This was one of those nights where you go, well, I was expecting to have a really fun, nice time up here tonight, and it just blew past expectations with the doubleheader. Uh, you know it was going to be something neat when these two communities come together with as much passion and loyalty and everything that it, that it defines uh, Glacier Peak High School and Snohomish High School. And tonight it really happened. Glacier Peak wins the girls' game 49-35. to and Snohomish wins the boys game 45 to 40, and uh, they get it, they, they both, all the teams under 50, that just shows you, yes, there was offensive moments, but a lot of defense played tonight too. Sarah Elva, great job, she got us our post game guest involved with the camera work, she's doing a great job. Todd, I'm blessed that we have this opportunity to work together like we do, so. And I also want to thank the uh, Pooches on duty down in Magnolia, Pinky and Bluey, for uh, their help in the quality control once they woke up from their nap. So, and Debbie, of course, there too. Everybody, thanks so much. Todd had a blast. We got several more, many more coming up this season together. Now I gotta go apologize to Tall Tom for taking his game. So anyway, it was a blast. So anyway, once again, the final score in the girls game, 49-35 Glacier Peak in the boys game, 45-40 Snohomish. Winning is for tonight. Uh, uh, sportsmanship is for a lifetime. Take care, everybody. Mark Hawkins saying good night.